we're continuing our look ahead to college football season, specifically about what's coming back, uh, taking a look at Texas college football teams, the FBS teams, and, and, and asking the question, who has the best at each position? We did offensive line. Or I'm sorry, we did, uh, we did quarterbacks, we did running backs, we did wide receivers. I don't think there's enough tight ends, really. Probably not. Like we, Probably I, not I, loop, I did lump in the, the tight end numbers in there, and they're just like, the best one was probably like Gabe Schrade at Texas State yeah. who, who graduated, right? Um, there's just not enough tight ends to probably devote a whole segment probably to. Probably not. If you really want that, you can email me. Um, but let's take a look at the offensive line. Let's take a look at the big hog mollies up front. And, and I will tell you, in doing this, I guess I didn't realize how many good offensive linemen we're losing. Yep. It is a lot. Yeah. And when you look at this... Um, I kind of crunch the numbers. We have 3, 5, 6, 9, uh, 11, 12, 13. We had 13 offensive linemen last year who earned some sort of all-conference mm-hmm. um, n- nod, be it being on an all-conference team or even down to honorable mention. Of those 13, did I say 13? Probably. Okay. Of those, I should really count these. Uh, would you care to guess how many graduated? Yeah, it's 13. 11. Six. Oh, well. So Plenty half are coming of back. Them. But here's about the it. thing. Here's what we're losing. <laughs> we're losing Matt Pryor from TCU, yeah. who's second team all Big yeah. 12. Joseph Nopoon from t- uh, yeah. TCU, who's honorable mention Big 12. Austin Schlotman from TCU, who's yeah. all- honorable mention all Big 12. Will Hernandez, best offensive lineman in the state, yeah. who went to UTEP, or yeah. who's, who's gone to the NFL, who's first team conf- yeah. all-conference USA. Trey Martin at Rice was uh, uh, was honorable mention conference USA. Uh, and Evan Brown at SMU was honorable mention conference uh, um AAC, that does. We're also including right, Calvin Anderson. Right, Calvin Anderson was honorable mention Conference USA. We are tech. He is technically returning, but he's not returning there. Right, and so it's possible we lose him from the state as yeah. well. And then you're burying the lead. Yeah, because Connor Williams. Connor Williams. He gone. Connor Williams, who was not an all conference guy because he but basically got injured, but yeah. who when he was in the game was playing at an all conference level. Yeah. he's gone. Yeah. A lot of the big headliners are gone. So if you're looking for the individual guys, I mean, you're looking at a guy like maybe Travis Bruffy at Texas Tech, right. okay, who had a great year. Yeah. Um, Jack Anderson at Texas Tech. Jack Anderson. Yeah. Madison, uh, Madison, whose name I can never pronounce. Uh, Akmanun Nonu, yeah. Yeah. right? He had a great year. You have those guys. You got a bunch of guys from North Texas, Socia Mose, uh, Jordan Murray, few different guys. But it's pretty slim pickings. As far as that's yeah. concerned, unless you want to go with guys, you know, uh, like a Coda Martin or, yeah. or a guy who's more or of an a upside play pick. with Matthews. Yeah, an upside know? play, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I started looking at this, and and I will admit that it is, it is a little bit difficult to find returning starters and and really kind of dig down into it. And so here's what we kind of came up with: looking at these teams, that if how many of their starting five at the end of the year. Are they returning that those guys played at least half the game, half the right. games as starters? Yeah, it's a good okay. good place to start. Yes. So I took that, and that's where we got the returning starter stuff. We also got I, I took the data that um, our friends at Football Outsiders do great data work uh, about offensive linemen. Offensive lines are really hard to grade yeah. because they are asked to do so much. In a lot of respects, wide receivers are are kind of easy to grade, right? Yeah. How many times did they get the ball thrown to them? Yeah. How many times did they catch it? How far did they go? Right? Those are really things yeah. we can observe. It's harder to do that for offensive line, but they do a great job uh, doing things like line yards, which is when you're running the ball, you can usually as- associate, I think, four yards to uh, to offensive line. Uh, you know, the first four yards of the offensive line, the rest of it is, is the running back. Um, how they do on standard downs, how they do... Because remember, pass protection... Things like that. So a lot of different data points. And I kind of took their, their national rankings and I kind of averaged them out in, in a gross way. Um, would would it surprise you to learn that on average, according to Football Outsiders, the top offensive line in the state of Texas last year was SMU? That would surprise me. They were yeah. 24th in adjusted line yards. 
Uh, they were 32nd on standard downs. Uh, they were excellent. They were actually really good. They were 61st uh, on power runs. Huh. Uh, they were good on that. Uh, they were excellent as far as like getting past the line of scrimmage. Part of that is the scheme uh, that their stuff rate, which is that you like well, basically when you get stopped at the line of scrimmage, that was only 18 percent, which is 46th in the nation. It was the best in the state. Um, they were excellent on passing downs as well, um, uh, as far as their sack rate is concerned. So part of that scheme, but the numbers love what SMU did. Okay, the worst offensive line in the state last year was Texas State. Not necessarily surprising. Oh, yeah. uh, at basically about the 108th best in the, in, the, in, the, in the nation. Baylor was not far behind him, though. Baylor was bad. So you look at the returning starters. We do have, I believe, five or four teams. Uh, is that right? With four teams that return all five offensive linemen. That's not bad. Tech, A&M, Baylor, and Texas State. We're considering that the guys that they bring back were starters last year, right. so we're going to count them as returning starters. That's not, that's a, you know, SMU brings back everybody except Evan Brown who is their you know, all-conference uh, center. Uh, North Texas brings back everybody except one. Um, Texas, Rice, and Houston bring back three. UTEP and UTSA bring back two. And TCU got almost entirely wiped. They only bring back one. Uh, so how do you balance that? How do you balance the idea of what you did last year versus what you're bringing back? Mm -hmm. For example, Baylor brings back all five offensive linemen. That's great. The problem is their offensive line wasn't very good last year. Yeah, they won one game. So, yeah. do, like, it, it, do you want to compare them as – call them the best offensive line c coming back? Right. I would say no. Here is, to me, I think that there are probably um, – I would say three, maybe four teams that you could say are in the mix for best offensive line. One is North Texas. Right. I think North Texas is a pretty good offensive line. They're bringing back four starters from a team last year that that was pretty solid across the board. If you take the the average, they were fifth, the fifth best in the state. Bringing back four offensive linemen, I think they're in the mix. TCU is an interesting one. I don't know if they're they're necessarily in the mix. Based on what they did last year, I think they absolutely have to be in the mix right. as as one of the best offensive line. But they they lose so much right. that you're making such a projection there that I don't think it's fair to call them the best returning offensive line. Yeah. So I, I would take their amount. I think Houston is is, is very quietly pretty solid. Um, and I think that this is an offensive line uh, that I think people are uh, people are going to uh, stand up and pay attention to. Uh, you know, they do lose Marcus Oliver and, and uh, Nantai Rogers, but they bring back Will Noble, who was excellent as a center. Uh, they bring back the entire left side of their line, including Josh Jones and Braylon Jones, uh, at the left guard and left tackle spot, or left tackle, left guard spots, respectively. I think Houston's got a, got a conversation uh, in, in, in the conversation. But then you've got two more. Yeah. SMU is in that mix. Obviously, what they did last year. My concern, though, is that, yes, they were excellent. They were arguably the best offensive line in the state last year. But they are losing their best player. They're losing Evan Brown at the center position. And when you lose a guy like that, that's a, that kind of gives it a little bit of a demerit to me. They're in the mix, and I think if you want to say SMU's got the best offensive line coming back, I would say that's yeah. that's fair. Also, I have to wonder how much what they're going to have to do is going to change. Yeah. A, a Chad Morris office and a Sonny Dykes offense may seem similar to people, but it's really not. Yeah. Uh, you're going from you know up tempo, very multiple, all over the place to you know probably classic air raid yeah. hybrid there. So you're going to get a lot of different responsibilities for those linemen. My pick for the best returning offensive line in Texas is Texas Tech. Okay, you bring back everyone from what was a pretty darn good offensive line last year. They were especially good in passing downs, uh, where they were 13th in the nation uh, in passing downs, uh, as, far as, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, they didn't tend to get, you know, again, part of that scheme, um, they did not give up too many sacks, and that's with a guy in Nick Sheminek who was... I, let's say not... He, he wasn't Pat Mahomes. Pat Mahomes right. was super elusive. right. right. Nick Shemenek was not. No. To me, they are in the mix as being the best offensive line in the state. And right now, if you were to ask me who the best offensive line in the state, when you bring back a guy like Travis Bruffy, uh, you know, when we bring back a guy who, like Jack Anderson, who yeah. we believe is only going to get better. Yeah. Um, and in fact, if you want to say, if you want to, if you're looking for the individual, right, who's the best offensive lineman in Texas coming back, I think you've you've got a couple choices at Tech, including Jack Anderson, yeah. who I know people were just raving. Hey, about. You can play that well as a freshman. You're going to yes. be pretty good, absolutely. Yeah. So for me, I would give the nod right now to Texas Tech. I think they have the best returning offensive line in the state. Um, of course, these things are so fluid that we'll find out. 
And it could be a, it could be that Baylor has the best offensive line because yeah they were terrible last year yeah but they bring back everybody right and that continuity will pay off yeah. so it's it's an odd thing to judge it's a lot tougher to judge than quarterbacks right but I do think right now I would give the nod to Texas Tech seems reasonable especially the fit for the scheme right right it's and some continuity there that's really important that's that's exactly right so for me Texas Tech gets the nod.